Oh, Free State kept its place as the leading province with an 89% national senior certificate pass rate, an increase of 0.5% from uh, 2022. So congratulations to them. And uh, it's, you know, fantastic to see how these provinces are doing. But obviously, there's a lot that now, of course, we see with the results coming in. Now, what do we do? And the reality is, is that we start looking towards tertiary institutions to take us forward. And government, which is a big, uh, a big movement, has set aside 3.8 billion rands in funds to support the missing middle. Um, these are students that, of course, are, are part of that national student financial aid scheme that they're hoping to help. So um, uh, when it was announced on Sunday, the Higher Education Minister, Bladen Zamande, revealed that the funding model is divided into two phases. And Zimande says the revised financial model will ensure that the missing middle can access financial support to pursue their studies. And according to Nzimande, the loan is expected to fund 70% of students studying science, maths and technology programs, while only 30% would be for humanities programs. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this. We've got in studio with us um, the Deputy Minister of Higher Education and Training, Buti Manamela. So good to see you. Thank you so much for and having me. And thank you for dressing up and showing up in a three-piece <laughs> suit. I thought I was overdressed, but you know, we're happy. We, we got very good news yesterday. It's the fantastic. The of the, you know, metric results. So let's talk about that. I mean, before we yeah. even get into this. So, yeah. I mean, an improvement, the highest that's ever been achieved yeah. by a yeah. class, and we leave it to the class of 2023. Yeah. Obviously, this is putting even more pressure on no, tertiary no, no, of institutions. Of course, of course. I mean, I was telling, uh, 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 you know, the, the Premier of Gauteng yesterday that, uh, you know, Amat 2000 have performed significantly. And I think if we, um, you know, look at the numbers themselves, about 700,000 of those who wrote just above that, um, you know, qualify to study at a post-school education and training institutions, which is universities, TVET colleges, and community colleges. Um, and, and we, I mean, have spoken to 23 of the 26 universities. There's about 210,000 spots available there, uh, and just above 150,000 at our TVET colleges. Of course, there would be more, uh, you know, once we have rounded up all the the universities and all the TVET colleges uh, but we really want to encourage those who haven't applied most of the universities have closed their applications but about nine universities and depending on specific programs still allow for applications but I think also more importantly uh, you know before we get to the main issue of mm. the fund um, you know then as fast as received about 1.4 million applications wow. And uh, they're still expecting a million more applications. Uh, the closing date is the 29th, I mean the 30th, I think, of January. I'll, I'll just have to verify that, um, uh, you know, for applications to NSFAS. And I know most of the parents are quite anxious. You didn't expect that your child will get straight A's and now you're going up and down and all of that. But do make inquiries at both universities at colleges and community colleges that's where we have uh, you know study opportunities for uh, students who have just qualified and I know the pressure is always to uh, you know try and push uh, kids towards universities but we have uh, you know, uh, increased the capacity of our TVET colleges. There's quality training and skills that, uh, you know, happening there. If, uh, you know, you want to be a plumber, if you want to be an electrician, those are the kind of things that are being offered at our TVET colleges. So do apply for NSFAS, do speak to your neighboring university or TVET college and look at whether they have space to study uh, or not. And of course, many of these students will be looking at uh, you know, a, a, a gap year, uh, doing some service or, uh, you know, or another or traveling the world and so forth. But, uh, you know, in the last three or four years that we've, uh, you know, started implementing the fee-free higher education, we have, uh, you know, hardly had, uh, you know, major challenges of space. I think the system has expanded and we are trying to accommodate more and more students. You're saying the right words. You, 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 you're putting it out there and still in confidence in these, in these learners that are going out there and they're wanting to apply. We're talking to this, this uh, missing middle student. Oh, yes. However... We have to look at, the, at the, the bigger picture here. You're looking at, and this is all going to fall under NSFAS again. Yep. Now, NSFAS, come 
the 15th of January, outstanding payments of loans from students that had previously yeah. applied have still not been paid. Yes. There's still another scandal rocking Nesfas. Yeah. I don't want to talk about that when it comes to the minister. That's not your domain to talk about that. But I mean, that whole issue around um, the minister, Bladen Zimande's advisor, awarded a 44 million rand tender. That's another problem. A leader at Nesfas, somebody who we don't even have, uh, somebody who is overseeing at the CEO. How are you now putting more pressure on Nesfas? Yeah. How can we trust this institution? Look, firstly, um, the, the, uh, in terms of the outstanding payment, uh, NSFAS has indicated yesterday that uh, of the 20,000 students who are outstanding, 9,000 of those have already been paid. And the big issue here has not been capacity on the side of the NSFAS. It has been, I mean, we, we're working with a triangular system where uh, the student applied to a university, the university provides the information to the NSFAS, and the NSFAS then dispenses payment. So, so within that triangulation, I think the, uh, uh, you know, with the 11,000 students, that's where the problem has been. But they have committed that as soon as all of those glitches are resolved with universities and TVET colleges, all those 11,000 students will be paid as part of the cost of the 2024 academic year. So that's the first. And the second thing is I think the minister has issued a statement yesterday indicating that he doesn't uh, uh, you know, award tenders, nor does any of their advisors. In fact, he's categorically said that the person being mentioned as his advisor is not one of those advisors. But I think more details uh, uh, you know, would, uh, would come up as, uh, as and when. The third thing is, that the NSFAS has been running a loan scheme before it was turned into a fee-free higher education institution. So they have the internal capacity. They will be making announcement, uh, particularly for those parents uh, or households which earn le more than 350,000, meaning if they do not qualify. Uh, I mean, I was talking to uh, one of the producers here, and, and uh, you know, so it's particularly people who work uh, in uh, the public service, police, nurses, doctors, and all of that who falls within the bracket of 350,000 to 600,000, and they therefore do not qualify for NSFAS, but they are also cannot afford to pay their fees regularly. So this loan scheme that the NSFAS will be uh, administering is specifically targeted at, uh, you know, uh, those. It's 3.8 billion, which is the initial phase. Mm. The idea is to How mobilize... How did you arrive at that number, 3.8 billion? Well, it's the money that we reprioritized. Uh, uh, some of it is from the National Skills Fund. Some of it is from the Sector Education and Training Authorities, our CETAS. Um, uh, uh, and... Uh, we see this as much more agent than some of the priorities that both institutions had set themselves. Uh, you know, the minister will be reading the drive to engage with the private sector, to engage with, uh, uh, you know, uh, universities in terms of their existing loan schemes, uh, you know, in order to grow this fund, including the, uh, you know, the PIC. We see this as a major priority. Uh, and also in helping us, uh, uh, you know, to deal with what has been a stress uh, since 2018 when the NSFAS cancelled its loan scheme. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you know, in the course of the, f the next coming few weeks, we will be releasing details on yeah. where should students apply, mm -hmm. uh, what is the criteria, which is more or less uh, similar to the NSFAS, only that this will be a repaid loan, uh, you know, as soon as the students start working, uh, you know, and, and, and so on. And when we talk of the missing middle, I mean, we're talking about that income bracket where parents are earning between 300,000, but not more than 600,000 yes. per annum. And that's, a, that, that's, the, that's the category. So yeah. there, there's no application details right now. People can't right now yeah. go and start trying to get the funding for this. So does that mean they miss out on this year and it'll only be available from the following academic year? No. I mean, we talk... Yeah. Is it? No, 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 not at all. I mean, the, Still this, available this for is this year. for this academic year. So it is for this, but what happens yes. for institutions? Tertiary institutions, will they understand this so, in terms so, of funding? So what happens is, um, uh, you know, tertiary institutions uh, confirm that, you know, this is 
a student, uh, you know, so, so uh, there is less danger in terms of those students, uh, you know, being excluded. Uh, and as soon as uh, I think the NSFAS in the, in the coming few weeks finalize the details will be issued. So this fund, for instance, we, I mean, the, the problem has been affecting more than 67,000 students. And so this fund will be covering about 45% of those, which is 37,000 in this academic year. Okay. So if you are a parent at home, uh, you know, the, the ask your child to also check the NSFAS website so that, uh, you know, as soon as the details are announced, you are able to apply and we are going to work hard as we've done in the previous years to make sure that there is no child who wants a study opportunity in our post-school education and training so here, who's here left is, behind. Uh, for those that are watching, let's put this out because, I mean, this gives you all of the information that you do yes. need to know and and this is, uh, the, the, the demand is going to be huge and there's yeah. no doubt, but uh, do we have as yet the terms of of the loan agreement that students are expected to sign and the conditions and expectations for students who obtain this loan yep. and the repayment structure. Do we yep. know this as yet? Yes. Uh, so, so firstly, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's almost the criteria of the NSFAS, which is about uh, you know, 60%, so those can apply. And as, as you've indicated in your intro, that uh, we are going to be preferring math, science, and technology study students. Um, uh, you know, and, and if you pass all your grades uh, in record time, as they say on campus, you get 50% discount. Uh, and interest will kick in as soon as the students start working for them to repay. Uh, but, you know, some... some Two, two key issues that I want to highlight before uh, uh, you know you, you close. Let's be aware of Bogus colleges. There are colleges, yes. Yeah. If there's no space in the public uh, 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 higher education sector, some parents will go to private institutions. Please check, as the numbers indicate, whether that institution is registered or not. It's quite easy. Punch in the name of the institution on our website, and it will tell you whether they are a, a you know real Makoya or their fly-by-night college. And that's what's important. So let's, let's unfortunately wrap it there. Um, we'll put that, let's put that up again, if you don't mind. We'll put up that card. Just write that number down, write that email address down. That's that one that's there on your, right on the corner of, well, it's my right-hand side, your left-hand side, I imagine. I don't know, but that's the side of the screen. Have a look. That's for the bogus institutions and all of the other details that are there. Uh, Buti Manamela, who is the Deputy Minister of Higher Education and Training, uh, unpacking the implementation of this first phase of the comprehensive student funding model for that uh, missing middle student which is so important but we'll have more details as it emerges minister thank you deputy minister thanks for being with us